My name is Jill Joshwitz, and I am Tina and Shalom Lamb's niece. I knew Sarah Dratch from, Fair, from Shared Family Simchas and many a Lamb Fam Hanukkah Jam while I was a student at Stern. Sarah was always so welcoming and really made me and my fellow out-of-town cousins feel like part of the family. In Sarah's memory, I would like to share some thoughts with you on Tehillim 84. Tehillim 84 is a poetic ode to the joy of divine worship and the Beit HaMikdash. The psalm can be divided into four sections. An introductory section, a second section which focuses on the anticipation of one who yearns to worship God and the Beit HaMikdash, a third section which discusses the happiness of a pilgrim who journeys to the Beit HaMikdash, and a final section which emphasizes God's might and glory and the greatness of God's temple. In Pasuk Aleph of Tehillim 84, the psalm is ascribed to the sons of Korach. The Pasuk reads, La Matzeach al Hagitit, Mizmor Livne Korach, for the leader upon the Gitit, a psalm of the sons of Korach. Tonight, I would like to focus on this introductory section and explore the identity of the sons of Korach. So, who are the Bnei Korach? In Parshat Bamid Bar, chapter 16, Korach a wealthy, prominent lady convinces 250 of the princes and leaders of the Bnei Israel to join him in a rebellion against Moshe and Aharon. In particular, Korach challenged Moshe's authority and his ability to determine appropriate leadership in the Israelite nation. At the end of the parak, in Pasuk 32, the Torah writes that the earth opened her mouth and swallowed them up, and their households, and all the men that were part of Korach's rebellion, and all of their goods. However, later on in Bamidbar, in chapter 26, in chapter 26, Pasuk Yud Aleph, the Torah qualifies the earlier account of the destruction of Korach's family, explaining that in fact the sons of Korach did not did not, did not die in the miraculous destruction of Korach and his family. In Masachet Sanhedrin, Daf Kuf Yud Amud Aleph, Chazal explained that when the earth opened up to swallow Korach and his men. God created a special ledge in Gehenna for the Bnei Korach, where they sat and sang songs of praise to Hashem. Rashi explains that while the Bnei Korach had originally joined their father's rebellion, they had done teshuva, and so Hashem had saved them. Interestingly, in this Agadah, Chazal connect the salvation of the Bnei Korach with music and songs of praise. This connection between the Bnei Korach and musical songs dedicated to God likely reflects Chazal's knowledge of biblical sources pertaining to the musical responsibilities of the descendants of the Bnei Korach in temple worship. For instance, in Sefer Divrei Hayamim, the court chronicler during the reign of Jehoshaphat records the singing responsibilities of the, Bnei, of the Bnei Korach writing. Of the children of the Kohatites and of the children of the Korachites stood up to praise the Lord, the God of Israel, with an exceedingly loud voice. Similarly, there are 12 psalms in Tehillim, Psalms 42 through 49, 84, 85, 87, and 88, which are all dedicated to the sons of Korach and their introductory verses. According to the medieval Provencal scholar Radak, the fact that Psalm 84 is dedicated to the sons of Korach indicates that it would have been sung by the Bnei Korach as part of their Levitical temple service in the Beit HaMikdash. Even though the Bnei Korach of Tehillim 84 are descended from Korach, the man who started a rebellion against Moshe, they still had a place within the, within the Jewish people. Rather than being treated as outcasts, Korach descendants still merited to take part in the temple worship. As we have seen in both Debrei HaYamim and Tehillim, the sons of Korach played a crucial role in the liturgy of temple worship. I hope that the next time you say a parak of Tehillim, which is dedicated to the Bnei Korach, you will think about the message of repentance and acceptance, which is inherent to the continued involvement of the Bnei Korach in Jewish ritual life. Have a good night.